name is Hamilton. I'm the owner of Lightfoot. Oh, well, too bad your horse lost, Mr. Hamilton. He's a great trotter. My horse didn't lose, legally. I'm filing a protest. Protest? On what grounds? On the grounds that your horse, Sparks, was doped for the race. Dope? That's ridiculous. It's easily proved by the saliva test, and I demand well, one. just as you like. Young man, I have information that you were seen giving your horse a dope injection. NBC presents The Adventures of Frank Merriwell. echo of the past, an exciting past, a romantic past, the era of the horse and carriage, gaslit streets, and free-for-all football games, the era of one of the most beloved figures in American fiction, Frank Merriwell. Merriwell is loved as much today as ever he was, and so the National Broadcasting Company brings him to radio in a new series of stories based on the famous books written by Gilbert Patton under the pen name Bert L. Standish. Today, Tap Day. It's the week before commencement at Yale, and we find Bart and Inza standing just inside the railing of the trotting track at the deserted New Haven fairgrounds. Frank, riding a small racing sulky, is just finishing putting a sleek trotter through its paces. Here he comes. Get on the stopwatch, Bart. Got it. Look at that. How fast? Two fifteen and a quarter for the mile. Is that good? Good for a trotter. It's great. Oh, wait till I tell Frank. Here he is. How do we do, boys? Two fifteen and a quarter. Oh, wonderful! Ah. I told you, Sparks is a great trotter. Oh, no wonder Father expects to win the race Saturday. I certainly appreciate his asking me to drive, Sparks. Mister Hodge knew what he was doing, Frank. It's an amateur race, and he knew he couldn't find a better amateur driver than you. Well, I hope I don't let him down. Well, I'm not worried about that. With the kind of driving you just did, Sparks will beat any trotter in the state. Well, you ought to have a rub down right now. Where's the groom? Oh, here he comes, Frank. Nelson. Jim and me, Mr. Hodge. Was my watch right? I clocked that mile in a 216. Your watch is right, Nelson. I caught it in 215 and a quarter. Holy smokes. You got yourself a trotting horse here, Mr. Hodge. Oh, we're sure of that, Nelson. But now you'd better cool him off and give him a rub down. Huh? Yes, sir. Right away. Come on, Sparks, baby. We're going for a walk. Yes, sir. That's a boy. Well, we'd better be getting back to town, Frank. Yes, I want to stop on Chapel Street and do a little shopping before the stores close. Just one more stop and we'll be through, boys. I want to go in here and try and pick up... What's that? Oh, some fuss outside Clemens Jewelry Store. Well, it looks like trouble. What's that fellow running for? Stop, thief! Stop! It's a holdup. Frank, Mr. Clemens has a gun. Head the thief off, Bart. Inza, get into that doorway. Yes, Frank. Here he comes. Let's go. Let me go. Let me go, I say. You kill me. Calm down, man. Nobody's going to shoot you now. He will. He's crazy, I tell you. Let me go. Get out of the way, you. That man's a thief. You better put your gun down, Mr. Clements. This man's a thief. Oh, get out of my way. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Clements, but I had to do it. Clements, are you out of your mind? You, you hit me. You struck me. Well, if I hadn't knocked that gun out of your hand, you'd have killed this man. He might even have hurt Frank. Oh, you struck me. I'm a respected citizen in this town. I'll see that you pay for this. Well, you didn't have to shoot, Mr. Clements. The thief's caught. You hit me. You interfered in something that didn't concern you at all. And you hit me. I'll spread this all over town. It's time you fresh college men learned a lesson. There's no use arguing with him, Frank. You're right, Bart. Really, Mr. Clemens, there's no need to be unreasonable. The boys were only... Unreasonable? Why, it's assault and battery, that's what. Unreasonable, Don't why, bother with him, Enza. We've got to take this man down to the police station. <laughs> Fleming. Anything more to say? That's all the statement I'm making. It's lucky you have no previous record. I'm holding you for attempted robbery. All right, take him away and lock him up. Yeah. Do you need us for anything else, Chief Burns? No, boys, except to thank you for bringing this man in. Well, thank you, Chief. 
What do you mean, boy? Well, he's talking about the owner of the jewelry store. Clemens got quite mad when I spoiled his aim. What's that? That's true, Chief Burns. He said Frank and Bart had no business interfering. And what's worse, he said he was going to spread it all over town. That Frank and I were just trying to show off. <laughs> yeah, I've heard everything now. Then Frank and Bart were right? Sure they were. You boys saved this man's life. As long as you could catch him, there was no necessity for shooting. Thanks, Chief Price. Of course, uh, Frank, the way I see it and the way others will see it may be two different things. Well, what do you mean, sir? Well, I know Clemens. He'll talk to the newspaper reporters. I wouldn't be too surprised to see the whole thing in the papers tomorrow. Well, as long as you think we did right, Chief, that doesn't bother us. Good boy. And if there's any kind of fuss made about this, Frank, you've got my backing. Hi there, Enza. Hello, Frank. Bart, come on up on the porch. We stopped by on our way to Connecticut Hall. I'm glad you did. Sit down. Thanks, Enza. Have you seen the evening paper? You mean there's a story about the holdup in it? Oh, there sure is. Show her, Frank. Well, never mind the front page. That's only a straight news story. Hmm. But look at this editorial. Let me see. An adolescent grandstand play endangering the lives of the citizens of New Haven. That's not fair. He kept his promise, all right. I'm afraid we're in for it. But that's awful. Why don't you both write a letter to the paper? Well, Chief Burns thinks we did the right thing, and that's good enough for me. Me too. But publicity of this kind, and, and now of all times. Oh, you're, you're thinking about skull and bones. Yes, I am. I know how much it means to both of you to be tapped for skull and bones. This could spoil everything. Oh, it's just a tempest in a teapot. For sure. Something like this would never make the seniors change their minds about a candidate. But bones is more than a scholastic society. I mean, they go by character and things like that, don't they? Well, that's true. They're supposed to pick the 15 outstanding men in the junior class, but I still say if Bart and I are in the running, this story won't make any difference. But just the same, Monday is tap day, and if any more bad publicity came out, it would certainly make a difference. <laughs> Inns is more anxious for us to be tapped for bones than we are. Well, I know how much it means to you, that's all. Well, it's one of the biggest events in a Yale man's life. I'd just die if you weren't tapped for it. I think it's sort of cruel anyhow, the way they make the whole junior class turn out at the fence for it, when they know only 15 will be tapped. But the fellows don't look at it that way. Failing to get tapped is a real test of a man's courage. I suppose so. Say, how about the trotting race tomorrow? You're coming, aren't you, Enza? I wouldn't miss it for anything. How was the workout today? Oh, wonderful. Sparks ran like a champion. Yeah, we'll win all right. I hope so. <laughs> Hi, Dudley. Hello, Max. Sit down. I got the evening paper. See what happened to Fleming? And a dopey bundle of job. <sighs> now, that's the last one he'll ever pull for us. Yeah, but you so see who caught him, don't you? You mean that kid Merwell? Yeah, the same kid that broke up our gambling setup a couple of weeks ago. Got Byron sent to the clink. Yeah. That kid's getting too big for his britches. That's what I mean, Dudley. If it wasn't for him, we'd be working our old racket. And no headaches. I'd like to get even with that punk. Not me. You saw what he did to Byron. Yeah, but I've been doing a little investigation on this Merriwell. Did you know he was driving in the trotting race tomorrow? Sure, I know. His horse is the favorite. What about it? What about it? We could fix it so his horse lost. Maybe make some dough out of it. Yeah, you nuts. The cops have been watching us ever since the Byron deal. Yeah, but if we can only work out some smart, safe angle... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think this out. Yeah. Yeah, sure, I got it, Mac. Yeah? Yeah, it's beautiful. You say you did a little mm. investigation on Murraywell. Then you must know about Skull and Bones. Now, wait a minute, Dudley. I'm not getting mixed up in any ah, murder. Ah, Skull and Bones is a kind of fraternity of dope. Oh. Getting into Skull and Bones is the biggest thing in Murraywell's life right now. You're kidding. Take my word for it. But here's the payoff. The guy doesn't get in unless his record is clean, see? So? All right. We go out to the fairgrounds before the races, see? Now here comes a real twist. Goodness, Frank.
Frank, what's the matter with Spark? I don't know. I've never seen him so excited. If he's this way here in the paddock, what'll he do out on the track? Oh, he'll calm down. Steady there, boy. Now, steady. Easy. I'd better tighten these cinches. Hold my racing jacket, Bartley. Oh, sure thing. That's a way. Boy, that's it. Take it easy now. Save it for the race. Hey! Oh, sorry, buddy. Take it easy, mister. This is the paddock. Only driver's known is allowed in here. Well, I was only taking a shortcut to the grandstand. Didn't mean to make you drop your coat. Here you are. Well, there's no harm done. Thanks, buddy. Good luck to you. The harness all right now, Frank? They're about ready to go to the post. I think so, Enza. I'll take my coat now, Bart. No, here you are. Uh, Mr. Hodge. Mr. Merriwell. Oh, what is it, Nelson? They're calling for the parade to the post, sir. Everything ready? We're as ready as we'll ever be. See you two in the winner's circle. I hope. Good <laughs> luck, Frank. <laughs> Here they come out of the back stretch. Oh, Bert, that horse Lightfoot Sparks will never catch him. Look at him run. Well, Frank's been holding Sparks in check ins. Just watch him when they make this turn. Here they come. Come on, Sparks, come on. Watch now, Frank's making his bid. He's gaining on Lightfoot. Come on, Sparks. Drive him, Frank, drive him. They're hubbing, hub now. He's got him in the. Wait and see. And a boy, Sparks. You're right, Bert. He's pulling ahead. Good work, Frank. Sparks has a length lead now. He'll never be caught. See that? He's pulling away. You're in, Frank. It's in the bag. Sparks wins. <laughs> My three lengths, Inza. I told you, what a horse. I bet he broke the track record. Hey, we promised to meet Frank in the winter circle. Let's hurry. Oh, Frank, that was a beautiful race. And the time, Frank. Sparks broke the track record. Oh, he's a great horse, Bart, but he even surprised me today. He was never so fast. Oh, come on, Inza. They're ready to present the cup. I want you to take it on behalf of my father. Of course, I'll be thrilled. Uh, just a minute, hold up the ceremony. Well, what's the trouble, sir? My name is Hamilton. I'm the owner of Lightfoot. Oh, well, too bad your horse lost, Mr. Hamilton. He's a great trotter. My horse didn't lose, legally. I'm filing protest. Protest? On what grounds? On the grounds that your horse, Sparks, was doped for this race. Doped? doped. That's ridiculous. It's easily proved by the saliva test, and I demand one. Just as you like. Young man... I have information that you were seen giving your horse a dope injection. Frank, nobody would believe a silly charge like well, that. Of course they won't. Then I want to search. Marywell may still have the evidence on his purse. Search your way. I'll be glad. Well, I'll be... Frank, what is it? Well, how... how did this get in my pocket? Hypodermic needle. There, you see? I knew it. Young man, in the interest of sportsmanship, if you have any, I demand you forfeit this race to Lightfoot. Frank, explain to the crowd and to the judges. Tell them how that got in your pocket. I wish I could, Enza. But I can't. This is a disgrace. I advise you, Marywell. You better leave before the crowd takes it in its head to tar and feather you. Come on, Frank. Yes, Frank, please. All right, but I'll clear myself of this charge somehow. Copper? Hey, somebody. I want to see Chief Burns. Hey, hey, what's all this noise? Chief Burns. What's wrong with you, Fleming? Now, look, if you start making any trouble now, I can promise it'll go harder with you in court. I don't want to make any trouble. I want to save some. Yeah. What's that? I want to talk to that Yale kid that brought me in here. Frank Merriwell? Yeah, that's the one. I got to see him. It's important. Now, look, Fleming, you got nobody to blame for this mess you're in but yourself. Murray Will did your favor whether you know it or not. Sure, I know it, Chief. That's just the point. Look, do you like that kid? Murray Will? Of course I do. He's a fine boy. What's that got to do with you? Plenty. Get him here to see me as fast as you can. You must be crazy, Fleming. Now, take it easy. Don't let me have any more trouble with you. Hey, Chief, wait. I'm not asking a favor for myself. I'm asking it for Murray Will. What? He's in a jam, and I'm the only one who can get him out of it. How's that again? Come back here and I'll tell you. But hurry up. We haven't got much time. All right, Fleming, all right. It won't hurt to listen. Now Spill look, it. All you have to do is to bring him here to see me, see? Yeah. That's that as much, is it? Only you've got to hurry. And suppose I do it? I've got some information that'll help him. But it's gotta get he's gotta get here fast. Will you will you get him, Chief? Well, I I guess it can't do any harm. Then find him now and bring him here right away. Oh. But this is the first time I ever took orders from a crook. Well, 
what a fine how do you do. The newspapers are really on us this time for that horse doping business. Oh, it's awful, Bart. How can they say things like that about you and Frank? Well, you can hardly blame them. The evidence is strong enough. I'm only sorry your father's horse was disqualified, Bart. Oh, don't worry about that, Frank. I had a wire from Dad. He says that he knows you were framed. Well, that's some consolation anyhow. Anyone with any sense would know that. I wonder. You're, you're thinking about tap day today. Well, it happened at the worst possible time. When the seniors in Skull and Bones read this story, they'll never tap me. Surely they won't believe it's true. I don't know. As Frank says, this is the worst possible time for it to happen. Four o'clock already. We'll have to start over the fence pretty soon. You mean you're going over anyway? Even though you're sure you won't be tapped? Well, we have to, and it's part of the whole idea. But you needn't come along. If you two can face it, I can too. I'm going over with you. Good girl, Enza. Oh, Frank, look. Here comes Chief Burns up the walk. Afternoon, Chief. Oh, hello, boys. Say, Frank, I've been looking all over for you. Someone told me you might be up here at Burridge's. Well, what is it, sir? Anything wrong? Well, you remember that fellow Fleming you caught robbing the jewelry store? Well, what about him? He's been asking to see you in his cell. Me? Yeah. I don't know why, but he's in an awful sweat about it. Wants to see you right away. Well, we have to be over at the fence in an hour, Chief. Tell him Frank will see him after the ceremony. No, Bart, wait. You and Enza go ahead. I'll join you when I talk to Fleming. Lead the way, Chief. Five minutes. Call me if you need me, Frank. Yes, sir, I will. Well, Fleming? I don't waste any time, Merrill. First off, I want to thank you. For having you arrested? For saving my life. That dumb storekeeper was shooting to kill and you stopped him. Caused you a lot of trouble, didn't it? Well, that's all blown over now, Fleming. Yeah, but uh, you're in more trouble. Oh, you mean the horse doping? How did you know about that? Yeah, I hear things. Never mind how. I know more than that, too. I know who doped your horse. You do? Yeah. A couple of no-good raps I used to work for. The same ones that put me up to that jewelry store job. They double-crossed me and nearly got me killed. Ah. They told Clemens, they told me Clemens didn't have a gun. And I could walk in and out easy. Well, you know what happened. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have been plugged. I think they wanted me plugged. I see. But this doesn't make sense, Fleming. If they were betting on Lightfoot to win, why didn't they fix it for my horse to lose? Why should they work it the other way and have us disqualified? They had a grudge against you for running those gamblers out of town a few weeks back. So that's it. Yeah, it was a frame. The guy they got the hypo from came to me this morning. He tried to bail me out and spill the whole story. Guess he figured I'd feel better if I knew you were getting it in the neck, too. Look, Fleming, have you any proof? I wish I did. I, I want to see those rats get it as bad as you do. All I know is they did it. You'll have to get the proof yourself. Oh, if only... Wait. You got an idea? Fleming, how would you like to get out of here on probation? Out of jail? Are you kidding? I've got a plan, if you'll help. Give me a chance, that's all. Just the chance. Not yet, and it's 4.30. What's he doing so long down at the jail? I wish he'd come along soon. I overheard several of the juniors mentioning his not being here. So have I. They'll think he's ashamed to show his face. What would happen if he didn't show up? They'd all say he couldn't face the possibility of not being tapped for skull and bones. Mm. But I know, Frank, he'll show up no matter what. Of course he will. But just the same, I wish he'd hurry. I don't like that whispering about him. Nice one, Mac. Yeah, my hook's breaking just right. You're up. Yeah, watch this one. Hey, Dudley, for crying out loud. What's the matter? Look who's coming through the door. That kid, Merriwell. Uh-oh, there may be trouble. Looking for somebody, mister? Oh, yes. You're Dudley and Mac, aren't you? Suppose we are. I was just talking to your friend Fleming. Fleming? Never heard of him. You can drop that, Dudley. Fleming made a deal with the police. What's that? Shut up, Mac. Go on, kid. He made a full confession naming you two in the jewelry store robbery. Why, that did And he also said it was you two who doped my horse at the trotting race. So he did, did he? If you think you can pin anything on us, kid, you got another thing coming. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not trying to pin anything on you. I stopped by to thank you. Thank us? 
Yes, you did me a big favor. I was planning to pull Sparks and make him lose the race. Huh? You wanted your horse to lose? Well, ever since that jewelry store robbery, I knew I couldn't make Skull and Bones. And without Skull and Bones, I don't want to stay in Yale. So I bet a wad of money on Lightfoot and plan to pull my horse and make him lose. Then I was going to get out of this town. Well, how do you like that? Yeah. Only my horse was so full of dope I couldn't handle him, and he was disqualified, so I got my money anyway. <laughs> Thanks to you. So you're leaving Yale, huh? This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. Well, that's right. I've got another tip for you. Yeah? A certain friend of yours is out of jail. He's skipping town today on the 448. I thought you might like to know. What do we care? Let him go. I thought you might want to see him. Well, so long, and thanks again. What time is it now, Bart? Uh, five minutes of five. Where can Frank be? I'm getting worried. <clears throat> Do you think I should go down and ask Chief Burns? Not now. You can't. Look over there toward Durfee Hall. And the Skull and Bones members are starting to come out. Will they start tapping right on the stroke of five? Uh-huh. Oh, Frank will never make it now, Windsor. This is something he'll never live down. How do you like that, Merriwell? Quitting Yale with a big bankroll. I always knew that guy was too smart to stay on the level. How can you be sure? Wait a minute, hold right, what's the matter? There he is, Fleming. Murray Wall was telling the truth. Yeah, look at that dirty squealer. All packed and ready to hop the train. Come on. Going somewhere, Fleming? Huh? Oh. Uh, hello, Mac. Dudley. Look at him, Mac. Acting like nothing happened. Come on, let's get it over with. Wait a minute. What are you going to do? You know what happens to squealers, don't you, Fleming? Now listen, fellas. I didn't say anything. Honest. He didn't say anything. That's a hot one. You spilled everything. Even how Mac and me doped that horse. And it's the last thing you're ever going to tell anybody. Look out. Let go of me. Leave him alone, Dudley. We've got you this time. Hurry, well, and the cops run. Stand where you are. You're under arrest. You won't get me. Look out. Frankie's sticking away. No, you don't, Dudley. This will stop you. Oh. oh. Nice sock, Frank. And as for you. Wait, wait. Don't hit me. I'll, I'll come along. That's right. We're all going down to the station. Oh, Chief Burns. Yeah? Could you drop me at the campus? It's right on the way. I've got a very important date there. Well, they're starting the tapping. I'll have to get over the fence, Inza. All right, Bart. I, I guess Frank isn't coming after all. He may still show up. I'll see you later. All right, Bart. Poor Frank. If he'd only get here. Inza! Inza! Frank! Where's Bart? Over there at the fence. They've already started the tapping. What in the world kept you? I haven't time to explain now. I'd better get over there myself, but Chief Burns will tell you all about it. Hello, Chief Burns. Oh, hello, Miss Burridge. I dropped by with Frank while my men took the two crooks off to jail. Crooks? I don't understand. Oh, that's right. You don't know about it. Well, Frank trapped the two men who doped the horse. He did? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. It's too late now. The ceremonies have already started. He, he won't be tapped. And, well, it means so much to him. Well, don't worry, Miss Burridge. No matter what happens, Frank is man enough to take it. <laughs> I wish you'd made it sooner, Frank. Harry Rattle and Jack Diamond were tapped just as you came along. I saw them. How many have they tapped so far? Thirteen. Then there are only two more to go. That's right. At least one of them, Norm Gordon over there, looks like a sure thing. Well, that's true. Norm stands number one in the class scholastically. Mm -hmm. He'll make it. But don't give up, Bart. They can still tap you. Yeah, but what about you? Well, I was involved in this doping scandal, not you. Oh, I wouldn't want it without you. Oh, here comes a senior over this way now. Hold your breath, Bart. He's walking this way, all right. Mr. Hodge? Go to your room. Hey, congratulations, Bart. Uh, 
Well, Miss Burridge, at least your friend Bart was tapped. Yes, and I'm glad for him, of course. But poor Frank. He deserves it more than anyone else in the class. Yeah. If only this whole business hadn't happened just when it did. Well, that's something that can't be helped. Oh, hey, wait. Here comes the last senior. He's walking right toward that Norman Gordon. Yeah. Looks like he'll get it all right. Look at the way Frank's standing there. Yeah. As though he were proud of not being tapped. Oh, wait a minute. What? They passed right by Gordon. What? Yeah. They're going toward Frank. Come on, come on, get it over with. I... That's it. He did. He did. He tapped him. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Chief Burns? Frank made skull and bone. I love the campus at night. Well, we better take a good look at it. This is the last time we'll see it as juniors. That's right, Bart. This time tomorrow we'll be members of the senior class. Pretty good feeling, isn't it? <laughs> I was really proud of you both today. You know, the part that bothered me was that you'd cleared yourself when it was too late to do anything about it. I didn't think I had a chance. That should make you twice as proud, Frank. The seniors picked you for Skull and Bones even though they knew you were under fire in that scandal. I'll never forget them for that. But anyhow, it's all cleared up now. Oh, incidentally, Frank, that was darn clever pretending to tip the crooks off about Fleming. Well, it was the only way we could get any evidence on them. I was dead sure they'd track Fleming to the railroad station when they thought he was leaving town, so I coached Fleming in what to say, and they admitted the doping just before they tried to beat him up. Well, sure, and then Chief Burns and his men were close enough to hear them say it. Exactly. It was almost a confession. When all those witnesses confronted them, there was nothing they could do. What about the other one, Frank? What happened to him? Fleming? Oh, he's out on probation. He uh, promised to go straight, and because he had no former record, they gave him a chance. And I think he'll do it, too. He was only an accomplice. I'm glad they were easy with him. Anyhow, it's too nice a night to think about anything unpleasant. You know, speaking of pleasant things, the newspaper printed a complete retraction of the stories they wrote about Frank. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you. Did you happen to see it, Enza? See it? Frank, I've already memorized it. <laughs> Another exciting adventure with Frank Merriwell, beloved hero of American fiction, brought to you in a new series of stories by the National Broadcasting Company. And be sure to listen again next week at this same time when Frank Merriwell brings you another exciting adventure. Frank is played by Lawson Zerby, Bart is Hal Studer, and Inza is Elaine Rust. Other members of the cast were Ed Latimer, Michael Guerin, Stephen Chase, and Phil Sterling. Original music is by Paul Taubman. The Adventures of Frank Merriwell is written by Ruth and Gilbert Braun and William Welch, and the entire production is under the direction of Harry Junkin.